Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be doing a very quick video on how to make best use of your time during the Easter break. Now, obviously this is the last holiday before your actual GCSE exams, so you kind of want to be doing the optimal level of revision, not overdoing it though. But today I'm going to be talking about how you can make best use of this time so you can maximize your grades. For me, this was a super important time because I felt quite behind in a few subjects um, before my actual GCSE exams. But during the Easter break, I really fixed up <laughs> a couple of areas that I needed to and that ended up helping me get uh, 12 grade points. So the first point that I have is getting into the right mindset. You want to make sure that you are prepared to put in the hard work over these two weeks because you know if you're not prepared to do it then you're not going to end up doing it. The motivation doesn't just come out of nowhere. You need to sort of build yourself up and feel like you know after this I'm not going to have to look at this content ever again apart from the subjects you're going to continue obviously but take it as some motivation that you know for the subjects you don't like you're not going to be doing this content again you want to you might as well give it a good send off you know um do as well as you can in your exams um and yeah that should kind of motivate you um but at the same time you want to make sure that you are incorporating rest um and that leads me on to my next point which is creating a efficient revision plan now, I would suggest getting a revision planner or simply what I did um, really close to my exams is take pieces of paper and just write massive to-do lists for like, you know, certain days or planning out what I'm going to do over the next like four days, like four day runs. Or like you could even do that for the whole two weeks. That would be really, you know, organized. But as you can see, it doesn't need to be pretty. This is very much illegible. I mean, it was legible to me at the time but um, I've gone ahead and I've just made a very simple list and I've ticked off what I've completed. And um, I've done that again here. If you can even read that, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if you can't. Um, but yeah, that helped me organize myself for short or spans of time. Um, and it helps you distribute your work better because if you just go into the holidays thinking, yeah, I'm just gonna get everything done because I have two weeks it's not going to happen because you need to sort of know how to distribute different subjects and different topics and subjects according to how confident you are in them. You're not going to be spending the same amount of time for every subject. It doesn't make sense to be dedicating, you know, a certain number of days per subject, maybe like one, one or two days per subject if certain subjects have, you know, much, much more work to be done in. Um, so for me, I had a lot of work to do for English literature and English language. And for maths, I did uh, very little. I mean, I guess close to my exam, the day before my exams during study leave, I would be doing um, work for maths. But you wanna make sure you are distributing things according to where you think you need to work the most. Next, for your actual revision in terms of what you should be doing, this is the time to be doing practice papers, as many as you can. Practice questions, practice papers, use Safe My Exams, use uh, Physics Maths Tutor. There's so many resources online. Maths Genie, if maths is something you need to be working on. Do as many practice papers, papers as you can. Look at the mark schemes. Um, I would suggest for sciences, you should be looking at mark schemes because sometimes some exam boards, um, some subjects, they have kind of specific marking points that come up in every mark scheme for a particular topic of question. So for example, whether it's the nervous system in biology or forces and motion in physics, they have certain points that come up in almost every mark scheme and you want to be learning kind of what those points are so when you go into the exam and see a similar question it won't be the exact same but you see a similar question you'd be like oh those are the points that were from a previous mark scheme so i might as well try and incorporate those points while applying it to the question that they've actually given me make sure that you are also revising the content continually of course doing practice papers is important but before you do those papers and also afterwards as part of your sort of follow-up um process you want to make sure that you are using your notes your revision resources. This is probably not the best time for making notes. Um, you should be using, if you don't have your own notes, then that's okay. Um, you want to try and use online resources, textbooks, anything like that. But don't waste your time making resources now because you have such a short amount of time. Just try using whatever resources you can get your hand on. Ideally, it can be your own notes if you have enough, but otherwise, you know, it's not the time to do it. And you can do really well if you don't have your own notes. I mean, it all depends on what subject it is again and, you know, what kind of things you need to focus on. Now, this is sort of a point that would be kind of useful before the Easter break, but can actually also be very helpful after the Easter break if you have some time. Try and get some papers done at home 
independently and give them into teachers to be marked because that's super useful. You can get um, really valuable feedback. And if you can't do this, then you should remember that you have done tests in the past that your teachers are marked. Look at the feedback because your feedback is, I mean, it's perfect. It's personalized messages that your teacher has given you. Um, for how you can improve because especially for essay writing subjects you know there's no one size fits all solution for improving your grades you need to be able to understand where you are you know missing certain aspects for um, your essays or whatever it is. Next make sure that you're using YouTube and other resources to kind of get some advice on how to revise for a particular subject but uh, my word of warning here is don't do this too much because you can just be overloaded with information. I think sometimes the risk is overcomplicating something um, which is doesn't need to be overcomplicated. Yeah don't spend too much time kind of on YouTube just on wasting time looking at videos. I mean I did this quite a bit. I just watched too many videos and like you get lots of great advice, but watching one or two videos is definitely enough. Um, you don't want to barrage yourself with a tons of information and then sort of be left in a state of paralysis of like, oh my god, I don't know what to do from here. I've just watched, like, you know, seven videos on how to revise for geography. I, I don't really know, you know, where to start. Take a single plan and stick with it. Um, don't sort of confuse yourself. Keep it simple. Um, you know, revising for GCSEs or any kind of exam, it doesn't always have to be complicated. It can be difficult, but it doesn't need to be complicated. It can be simple. It can be simple and difficult. Um, but I think that if you put enough time into it, and if you set your mind to achieving those grades and there being no plan B, then you can definitely do it. Just don't overcomplicate it. It's not, it shouldn't be a super, you know, complicated process. And finally, this is probably the most important point, is that you should be prioritizing your revision. If you need to write down a list of all of your subjects, give them number rankings or ratings, um, and basically just prioritize your revision. Um, I find it most simple just to start off with the subjects I'm the weakest at. And then within that subject, look at the topics that I'm most weak at, and then just start from there, work backwards, go from your most difficult topics to the easiest, then your next subject. And it, it's kind of, you know, you can, you can do it in a systematic way that makes it pretty simple for you to get through stuff that is most difficult to you. And the benefit of that is that in case you don't get through everything, at least you've covered the most important stuff. So definitely prioritize as much as you can. Um, you know, make these lists, like I, like I said, um, you can make them look prettier than these. Um, make something on, I don't know, Notion or, you can just write it down. It doesn't need to be complicated. Again, it can be simple, but effective. And if you put in the time into using some simple tools, you'll be very well prepared and you will do super, super good in your exams. So with that being said, that's all I wanted to say. Best of luck for your exams. You can do it. Um, don't get too stressed. I mean, I got really stressed during my uh, Easter break because I thought, you know, I'm completely in the bin for so many subjects, um, but it ended up being okay. Um, just make sure that you, yeah, stick to a plan. Don't get overwhelmed and yeah, put in the work, um, take rest. You can definitely take a couple of rest days, um, you know, a couple of days where you do absolutely no work. You can still fit in some time maybe to meet with friends, you know, relax, whatever, whatever hobbies you have. Don't disrupt your life too much. But again, obviously the central focus should be your vision. So yeah, with that being said, good luck and um, I'll see you in the next video.